So before the year of prayer, I uh, never really thought all that much about prayer and prayer hadn't been a really big thing in my life. But seeing the way God works and seeing the way God makes connections through this campaign itself has completely changed my uh, view on prayer. And I am honestly, I'm so thankful for that because prayer has been a lifeline through, through schooling and through my uh, missions trips that I've been going on. It's been something that has been a constant in my life when everything else fails. We're on a journey, a journey in a hot pursuit of Christ likeness, a journey on which daily prayer is the backbone of our perseverance in pursuing Him. Year of Prayer is an intercessory prayer ministry for Calvary's youth. Since our launch, 177 adults and 73 youth have joined Year of Prayer. But there are more adults in this place that can pray, and more youth that need to be prayed for. Meet Hannah. Hannah has been an active participant of Year of Prayer since the launch two years ago, and this is her story. It's not only a campaign that recruits the elder generations to pray for the younger generations in the church. It's something that that helps us grow as human beings, knowing that there's someone out there who, who is actively involved in our life and actively uh, seeking to, to know what's going on and how we are doing as uh, young adults and how we're growing in our faith with Christ. So my first prayer partner, her name's Stella Eaton, and fortunately I haven't got to meet her, but I'm sure I will soon. And my second prayer partner, her name's Claire McGregor. Thirdly, in my uh, first year, of the prayer campaign. I got to meet one of my prayer partners and her name's Esther Webster. Honestly, she's been so sweet and so kind and unfortunately within the first year we lost touch. But recently we've reconnected and we've swapped out uh, emails and we've been chatting, sending pictures to each other and keeping each other updated on our lives. And that one, that's been really nice knowing that she's been out there praying for me continuously. Throughout the past year, I, um, I've applied for a missions trip and I got accepted onto it and was partnered with Greater Europe Missions. And that process had been absolutely crazy and super stressful. It was hard adjusting to a life for five weeks that wasn't one that I was used to. So I got really lonely and it was very taxing emotionally as well. So I just, I ended up sitting down on a bench in the street and I started to read my Bible. I, uh, I picked it up out of my bag and I went through a passage that I was using to remind myself just to kind of stick it through, just, just stick it through one more day. Through that time, I kept reminding myself, I have people praying for me at home. I know these people, these people care about me and I know that they want me to succeed in this field that I decided to choose to go in. He answers prayer because even at my lowest, he helped me lead someone to him through this big process of prayer. Us teens and young adults need to be prayed for. I like the culture, it just it it drives this point home to us that we can we can be what we want to be and we can follow our heart, although we know our hearts can be pretty deceitful and that we need prayer to overcome what we have uh, been going through and what we've we've been taught. Because um, it's like a war, I guess, kind of between ourselves. Whether, like, do we go with the culture or do we go with what we're being taught biblically? Having like these people in our lives who who want to help us foster like the minds of, of choosing God over choosing ourselves is, uh, is pretty hard, but it's, it's awesome knowing that there are these people in our lives who want to help us overcome this cultural climate that just keeps pushing us back down into what it wants us to be.